It is just a beautiful day and I had to come out here. In 1928, there was a uh, at least a F4 tornado that touched down west of Carnegie. And I think it was hit right before Carnegie, but for some reason it veered off to, toward the south and it came right here to this point. And this is the original allotment of, of Lone Bear. He had three names. Uh, Tyloy Day, Tsai Ga, and And this was his allotment here. Uh, right in this area somewhere is his, uh, where his house was. It's so overgrown here I can't even locate the remnants of the foundation that was here. But this is where the house was. In uh, 1928 there were about six or seven members of the family that were in the house at that time. Cousin Carrie Ahendi remembers her dad, Harry Ahendi, going outside uh, three times. And then the third time he came running in and told everybody to get on the floor in the living room. And, and uh, the grandmother, Kuhn A. Hogg, yeah, was running through the house getting blankets and throwing them over her <coughs> kids and grandkids and um, uh, then she went to try and find a piece of canvas and that's when the tornado struck and Carrie uh, recalls uh, she says it feels as if the house was being lifted up off the ground she looked up at the ceiling and saw daylight in the cracks in the ceiling and that was the last thing that she remembered uh, she she said she kind of came to and she was sitting up in the pasture. Um, those trees weren't there at the time, of course. It was just a pasture out there. But she remembers uh, looking around her and seeing her dad and her grandfather. And it looks as if it was all beat up, she said. And uh, they found uh, her sister, Velma. And uh, Velma I was maybe like four or five years old, and she wasn't breathing. And gra her grandpa said, uh, bring her to me. And so they brought Velma to him, and uh, he prayed. Then um, they said he blew on the top of her head, and uh, Velma came back. So people say that Grandpa Lone Bear saved Velma with this medicine. Uh, they couldn't find uh, the grandmother, Joan A. Hogg, yeah. but there was a piece of the debris of the roof that was somewhere in that area there, and they looked underneath. They looked underneath the debris, and that's where they found her body. Um, her, she was dead, her neck was broken. Now, the Carnegie Herald reported that she was the only casualty in the, what is called the Great Carnegie Storm of 1928. But on the west side of Carnegie, they found a white farmer. Uh, his body was all wrapped up in bob wire. So there were two casualties in the Great Carnegie Storm of 1928. So this is what this uh, site here represents, represents where the house was built. Over in that direction, um, there was a dance site there that they used in the uh, 1920s and, and before that. It was, it was a dance ground of the Kiowa Taimpego Society. It was a Kiowa military society. And they would have their annual celebration here every 4th of July. And But it ended in... Uh, the last one was in 1927. In 1973, the descendants of Lone Bear reconstructed the dance ground. And they had annual celebrations here on Labor Day weekend. Up until 1999. And the uh, dance ground fell in disrepair. Um, and uh, they didn't have the funds to 
to reconstruct it. So, but this is what this dance ground represents, or this this allotment, this ground represents. It is a it's a Kiowa cultural site, a Kiowa cultural and historic site. In 1973, there was a dance ground that was constructed here at this spot. It was constructed by the descendants of Lone Bear. And uh, this was pretty near the site of the original dance ground, which was in operation during the 1920s and prior to that. And it was a celebration they had around the 4th of July. Uh, this one that was that was in operation during the 70s and 80s and 90s, uh, that was on Labor Day weekend. Um, back in the 1920s, uh, other tribal groups were invited to participate in the celebration here. And they would come and they would uh, camp all along here in this pasture. Some of them even would camp all the way down there to the creek there. That's about 200, maybe 300 yards down there. And that's how far that they would camp on this, on this uh, allotment. And uh, the ones that took place here in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, they, they camped a little bit closer here. In the, around in this area, closer to where the dance ground is. You can see the flagpole still there. Um, in the mornings, the, the uh, Kiowas would uh, perform what is called a brush dance. And uh, they would start, back in the 20s, they say that started way down there toward where the creek is. And it, I guess it took the better part of the morning and they would uh, progress on up here to the, where the dance ground is. Uh, some people, um, other tribal groups, have been claiming that the brush dance is a part of their culture. And that's a bald-faced lie. The brush dance was part of the Kiowa culture. The brush dance was part of the Kiowa sun dance and that signified that they were bringing the center pole into the encampment and then they would construct the Sundance Lodge after they had after they had uh, erected the the center pole of the Sundance Lodge but they also brought in what is what is, uh, they also brought in brush and the brush was of course used to uh, build uh, the Sundance as a shade in the, in the Sundance Lodge. So that's what that represented. The brush dance was part of the Kiowa Sundance. Uh, this dance ground uh, became in, dis in disrepair about, uh, well, 1999. It was the last dance that they held here. And uh, this place to me is uh, what is called a, a traditional cultural site. It can be probably put on the National Register of Historic Places, but I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Because maybe the the family might lose uh, possession of this property here if they did that. Um, but there are a lot of prayers said here. This is not just a historic or cultural site; it's a sacred site because a lot of prayers were said here at this uh, site by a lot of. Uh, elder Kiowa people, both during the 70s, 80s, and 90s, but also too during the 1920s and before that. So there are a lot of prayers said here at this site, and uh, to me that's what makes this place sacred. So it's a historic, cultural, and sacred site. <laughs>